Hey guys, this is part six in the series of famous preachers and their gospel message compared to the Bible's simple gospel message that the shed blood of Christ, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, according to the scriptures, is what saves. It is his shed blood paid for your sin. He restored what the first Adam, because he is the last Adam, messed up. So only he could do that. And so we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's a simple gospel. And it's, it's simply put in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. All the other stuff, cleaning up your life, following Jesus, all that is discipleship and service. And it's something we should do as a reasonable service because of the mercies and grace of God. All right? Because of the fact that he did save us. Uh, but that has nothing to do with salvation. So this is some excerpts from a book by Michael Bowen called I Never Knew You. Uh, in PDF form, I believe you can go online and just get it downloaded. I can send it to you if you can't find it. Um, now, I've done many videos on Ray Comfort. I did one that I edited together with scripture and context versus what Ray says. Uh, basically, what they do is they show you the law, which is great, which makes you guilty and shows you how you fail, which is great. That's the law's job is so the offense might abound, so that every mouth may be stopped and all become guilty before God to be a schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. is to show us our need for a Savior so that we do come to Christ helpless like a child and go, hey, I'm trusting you, Savior, to save me and not myself. Okay, that's what should happen. What doesn't happen is uh, that with Ray. Ray gives you the law. He shows you how you fail at keeping the law, and then proceeds to tell you that you have to keep that law in order to be saved. So he shows you that you lie, that you steal, that you do this, but then he tells you you must stop stealing and stop lying and stop lusting to be saved. Okay, that's works of the law. I can't tell you anything more than that. Uh, he tells you you got to repent, but he thinks repent means to turn from sin. Well, God repents like 38 times in Scripture, and he has no sin. Uh, repent is metanoia, the Greek word meaning change of mind. I've done a series on repent, repentance, repenting, repented, to show you many verses where God even didn't want Israel to repent, because it means he didn't want them to change their mind and go back to Egypt, or that he repented of the evil he was going to do to Nineveh in Jonah 3.10, and says that works is turning from your wicked way. It's clear. I saw their works. God saw their works that they turned from their evil way. So salvation is not of ourselves. It's not of our works. It's not about being bad and then tr deciding to be good. It is simply receiving the payment Jesus made through his suffering on the cross and his resurrection and the life. We know the payment for our sin was received because he did rise again. So we can trust in it. And that is the foundation for our salvation, not anything we do. It is unfortunate. I call it way of disaster. Because it can't get anyone saved, because it adds our works of righteousness, of trying not to sin. I've heard I've heard him clearly say, you must stop sinning, flat out. You must stop sinning. And if he thinks he stopped sinning, he's deceived himself, and there's no truth in him, sadly. He's a very charming, wonderful man. However, he is preaching an accursed gospel message. Now, I digress, uh, because I have a personal feeling for this, because I know his his he sells these eva evangelical like things you can order for a couple hundred bucks or something and um it teaches you the wrong way to preach and it's just it's the bane of my existence i just hate it i hate it so much i hate this false repent of your sins gospel because it keeps so many lost i told you before i was a bad heroin addict and i couldn't stop i kept getting sick and God never said I had to stop for him. He said to come to him just as I am without one plea, except his blood was shed for me. And so when I did that, I got born again, and then he helped me get rid of that out of my life. Okay, and that's the way it should work. Okay, so uh, it's causing people suicide. I got another girl in the hospital for attempted suicide from Lordship Salvation. I was contacted the day before yesterday. Uh, I just, I keep telling people that it's wrong and they keep fighting for it. I, I just don't get it. Anyway, according to the Way of Disaster, the Way of the Master website, Ray Comfort is a best-selling author of many books and is a co-host of a Bible-centered television program along with Kirk Cameron. Let me just say, Kirk did a very unchristian thing, very self-righteous thing that was a, you know, confirm why people hate so-called Christians. 
he he was an atheist and then decided he, he got saved supposedly became christian his his testimony i call a testimony because it's all about what he did none of what jesus did it's all about what he did i stopped doing this i started doing that it wasn't what jesus did at all and there was a girl that got a job on the show growing pains and he had found out she had done a spread for playboy so he got her fired does that show the grace of god no dave mustaine of uh megadeth he saved right he got there was a band that was overtly anti-christ but instead of getting them fired he quit because he said it was a more christian thing that he himself take the financial loss rather than ask them to take a financial loss so that he could show the love of christ even to people that were anti-christ that is what a christian does just saying all right Kirk Cameron is a well-known actor that most people in the U.S. will recognize from his role in the hit show Growing Pain. Kurt admits to being an atheist before his conversion to Christianity. I think it's false Christianity. Together, both Ray Comfort and Kirk Cameron form a powerful team that asks many thought-provoking questions about the topic of God's holiness, man's sinfulness, and the wrath of God to come. He who believes the Son has life, he who believes not the Son has not life, and the wrath of God abides on him. Simple. If you don't believe on Christ and his finished work, the wrath of God's on you. If you're saved and you trust in Christ, the wrath's not on you. Foremost to their credit is their ability to reason with people in such a way as to get them to admit by their own volition that they are in fact guilty of crimes before a holy God in a very compelling and effective manner. I said I applaud them wholeheartedly for their ability to get people to realize they're lost and to see their own sinfulness. Very good. They use the law to show people they're guilty, and I think that's great. Because a lot of people think they're safe because they think they're a good person, right? And they'll ask, are you a good person on their website? And you clip on it, and then they'll, they sh it shows you how you're guilty. And you've even broken one of God's laws just once. It's enough to send you to hell. Because God's standard is perfection. But in his mercy, he gave that perfection back to us. When Adam fell, we we died, right? We, we had the death sentence. But Jesus, through his obedience, because of Adam's disobedience, we all get the death sentence. But through Jesus' obedience, that's why it says through the obedience of one, uh, we get life. So through his obedience, he restored us to perfection. See, because God imputes his righteousness on us. He gives us his righteousness and perfection because we're in his son. Because we trusted in what he did. But Ray won't tell you that. He'll tell you you get perfection because now you got to keep the law that he shows you you can't keep. He shows you what none of us can keep the law and then proceeds to tell you to keep that law. See, you lied, you stealed, you're a thief, you're a liar. Now you got to stop lying and stop being a thief to get saved. So he's telling you to keep the very law that he just showed you that you can't keep. So he's adding the law to the gospel and it makes me insane and I'm shaking right now. Because for some reason, these guys just, they get under my skin. Ah. Uh, all right. So he said, after I trusted Christ as my only hope of reaching heaven, I wanted to tell the world exactly how easy it really was to be saved. It's not hard to receive a free gift, people. Eternal life is a free gift, period. Paid for completely by the work of Christ. Something done 2,000 years ago and not what you do. All right. What you do has to do with you being rewarded or suffering loss of that or chastisement or blessing on your life or whatever, but it has nothing to do with you being saved. And so I inadvertently ended up making a hobby at a hunt down and challenging internet ministries that advertise a false gospel message on their internet sites. <laughs> it's funny to me. I don't know why that's funny. <clears throat> As a result of this venture, I gained a lot of needed education in terms of witnessing to people during this time because I encountered every type of personality imaginable by doing so. But through it all, God granted me a fearlessness in terms of witnessing to people, both over the internet and face-to-face -face as well. Me too. I, I'm bold for the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God unto salvation for all who believe. And uh, the problem is people are ashamed of it, so they add something to it because they don't want people to say, you do believism and this and you just love sin. Because they understand the strength of sin is the law, not grace. It, it's a very carnal understanding. Uh, and it makes me very, very sad that they put the cart before the horse, keeping people from coming to Jesus. Because they're afraid they have to stop being bad. 
they have to stop doing these things. And they have no desire not to because they don't have the Holy Spirit. How can you ask a safe, an unsaved person to want the things of God and to stop doing the thing that they like doing? You can't. you got to get them saved first, get the Holy Spirit so he can help them want the things of God. And he says, it's the only message that will actually save anyone. Knowing the truth of what Jesus Christ said regarding his gift of everlasting life will make you bold too. So if you believe his message, be prepared because he might just end up using you to tell others of his free gift just like I'm doing. Amen. Just like I'm doing. And, I, and a lot of you got the hats with uh, Jesus plus nothing perfected forever. And I know you're going to use that as an evangelical tool that makes me very happy. He said he was thrilled to know about it. And when he was taken to Ray Comfort's Living Waters site, he said, I could not believe what had just happened. So I wrote my new friend, who is born again, this very same note you are about to read. Okay? He wrote, I need your prayers. I appreciate your statement of faith, too. But you have a link on your resource page. See, his friend had Ray Comfort's Living Waters link on his page. Although he was born again. He had the right gospel. He didn't realize Ray Comfort had a false gospel message. And this is the letter that Michael Bowen wrote to his friend. He says, but you have a link on your research page that takes you to a man who promotes salvation by works. Hey, how can you allow their link on your site when everything they say is in direct conflict with what Jesus Christ said concerning about salvation? You must remove their link from your site, else you are in conjunction with a counterfeit gospel that cannot save anyone. You are giving home to blasphemy. You are giving aid and comfort to the enemy living waters. Salvation stance is directly opposite of Ephesians 2.8.9. Christ said in John 6.40 that the will of the Father is for everyone that recognizes the Son as the Messiah and believes on him alone will have everlasting life. In John 6.47, Christ said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me has everlasting life. Notice there are no works here. Ray and Kirk are calling God the Father a liar with their false gospel. You must remove it. About a day later, my friend wrote me back in complete agreement. Why? Because the man had the Holy Spirit and he bore witness to that truth. He put up a page on his site that condemned the false plan of salvation according to Ray Comfort and Kirk Cameron. The plan of salvation according to Ray Comfort and his cohort Kirk Cameron defines repentance incorrectly in the most elemental sense possible. By the way, God gives repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. True repentance is to change your mind and believe the truth about what Christ did for you and that you are lost without his shed blood, period. That is repentance, people. And I surely preach it. I just don't preach false repentance because that means to keep the law. He says, neither of these gentlemen uses the original Greek meaning of the word for repent, but it's metanoia. It just means change your mind. That's all it means. Nothing else is added to it. He said you could change your mind about bananas or anything else, but it's be wrong because it has nothing to do with it. They claim salvation is faith plus works and deeds of the law under the clever guise of committing your life to Christ. See, it's the subtlety that beguiled Eve people. It's works, but they won't call it works. They'll say it's grace or that believing actually means obedient faith or faith means faithfulness and obedience. It's not what it means. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. To believe God means to be persuaded that what he promised he is able to perform. It tells us that in scripture. We go by what the Bible says, not what man says. He was always referring to a change of mind in scripture. It's crazy that this repenting your sins garbage has been infiltrating the true gospel. It's crazy to me. Oh, no sin it, it can interrupt. And again, the wages of sin is not repentance from sin. The wages of sin is death. And that's what Christ paid to fix it. All right. And he says the reason he's, he's so upset about it is because this gospel message is almost identical to the Catholics who, who equate Mary as being equal to Jesus or Jehovah's Witnesses that deny the deity of Christ as other non-believing apostate churches. And he says they're good people, supposedly, according to man's, you know, ways, but they're false. And you know who loves John MacArthur? And by the way, uh, Ray Comfort supports John MacArthur's study Bible on his, on his channel. They're all in the same group. 
The Mormons use it as their study guide. Did you know that? Mormons buy John MacArthur's Gospel of Doubt. <laughs> it's called the Gospel of Jesus Christ. But uh, uh, Bob Wilkin wrote something called the Gospel of Doubt to refute word for word what John MacArthur had said because he takes salvation and mixes discipleship, counting the cost. Again, in my other video, I said it can't be free and cost you something. That's confusion. It's free. Discipleship costs. Salvation's free. I'm sick of it. It's a lie because he tells you you got to stop sinning in order to be saved. And the Bible does not tell us to be willing to stop sinning because it's not of him who willeth or of him that runneth, but of God who showeth mercy. That isn't a lie because God never said you have to stop sinning to be saved. The phrase repent of sin is not in the Bible. Some of these false Bibles put it in. But it's not in the King James. It's not in the original Textus Receptus anywhere. Nor is it even implied when it comes to salvation through faith in Christ. These are clever lies of Satan. Designs to provide people with a heavenly way to go to the eternal lake of fire with him and his fallen angels. Christ said we must be born again. And to be born again according to him, you must believe he paid for your sins and for my sins when he died on the cross. On that cross, he paid for your sin, for my sin, for Hitler's sins, for everybody's sins. When we realize we're hellbound without Jesus, when we realize we're sinners who cannot enter heaven based on any combination of faith, but Christ, uh, faith in Christ plus how we live our lives, all we can do is simply believe that Jesus paid for all our sins by his death and subsequent resurrection from the grave. And when we do, friend, he erases our sins and credits us with his righteousness. That is the gospel. You trust in what he did, his shed blood, his death, burial, and resurrection gives you eternal life, and he counts it to you for righteousness. He gives you imputed righteousness. These people are trying to establish their own righteousness. They've gone the way of Cain, bringing their works this is Adam and Eve's fig leaves, self-righteousness. But God slew an animal and covered them. See, the blood even covered Adam and Eve. When you try to offer your works in Scripture, always the shedding of blood is the only thing. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. It drives me crazy. He says he erases our sins and credits us with his Righteousness, that is salvation. It's easy, it's too easy, yet that's how the God the Father designed salvation to be. To not believe that His Son is our Savior is to call God the Father a liar. That's exactly what 95% of today's pastors all over America are doing daily. That's why it took me two years to find a church that preached the true gospel. They are calling God a liar, and it makes me sick. And that's why I'm writing a book about today's so-called great pastors who nobody else seems willing to stand up and challenge. For me to attend a church where I know the gospel message of Christ has been deliberately mangled so that it cannot save a lost person, or to present myself to a body of so-called believers and passively sit by with a pastor lies to his congregation, it would tan him out to my giving an endorsement to his flawed doctrines. I cannot sit in any of these churches in my current hometown because none of them believe what God said about Jesus. He said it's better to stay at home. I don't blame it. It took me a long time, too. It's crazy. And he talks about how, you know, counterfeit money uh, is easy to spot when you study the, the real thing. All right, he said, look at what Jesus has to say for all those who placed only partial faith in him and the rest of their faith in living the Christian lifestyle. These people trusted in their many wonderful works. So let's look at it. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. These lost people use this verse to try to accuse you and me as if it's about sinning. See, ye that work iniquity, there's your sin. As if they stop sinning. But let's really look at what this says. This is talking about false prophets. Okay, that's the context. And they're boasting about what they did for Jesus. And they never did the will of the Father. And it tells you what the will of the Father is, is to believe on him. And this is the Father's will that sent me, that all who see the Son believe on him, I shall raise him up at the last day. They did not believe on him. They trusted in their works. I don't know how they see this verse and see anything different. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven, that's to believe on him. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? That means preach. And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Not I knew you and I lost you, or I knew you but you messed up. I never knew you. 
Depart from me, you that work iniquity. If you rely on your works, your works are iniquity, and your sin is still on your account. So, of course, you're a worker of iniquity. People cannot get that verse. Everything they do is inequity because all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. You cannot rely on your work. You must trust what Christ did. They have trusted, and it says from there, all who have trusted in counterfeit forms of the gospel will be sent to the lake of fire. And it says, I saw a great white throne in him that sat on it, from whose face the heaven and earth fled away. And there was found, actually this is earth and heaven fled away. And there was no place found for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead that were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. It says, who will you choose to believe, reader, when it comes to where you'll spend your eternal destiny? You choose the words of men like Ray Comfort, John MacArthur, or will you choose the words of Jesus Christ? This, of course, is up to you. People, I suggest you get in your Bible and you look at the plan of salvation. Now that you understand what the word repent means in context, you look and you see if you see any of those works they tell you to do. The sinner's prayer, asking him into your heart, repenting from sin, stop your bad habits, start your good ones, any of those things. No, you'll see it's not of works. And if you add works to God's grace, you cancel his grace. Because then it's no longer grace. You're trying to earn it. You don't want to do that. It, it really makes me upset. Because so many come against me for preaching the true gospel of God's grace, the real plan of salvation, because I want people saved. And I already know, once they're saved and the Holy Spirit's in them, they have insurance, they have a joy, they want to be in the Bible, they want to go after God, they want to grow in grace, they want to do these things. I see it all the time. But these people, they're carnal and they think it's, oh, you got a license to sin. Well, you still sin, you don't have a license, I got one. You know, what's your excuse? It's just ridiculous people do that, you know, because they don't get it. They don't get it. It's the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. So sad. So sad. And every one of these pastors I'm doing these videos on, they all corrupt the gospel. It is all another gospel which stands with a double curse from St. Paul. God bless you guys. Please, please choose who you're going to believe. The Bible way to heaven are these men because they sound good. God bless.